My name is Sam Vakli. The recent spate of accounting fraud scandals over the last of the past two decades signals, in my view, the end of an era. Disillusionment and disenchantment with American capitalism may yet lead to a tectonic ideological shift from laissez-faire, laissez-faire, laissez-passer in self-regulation to state intervention and regulation. This would be the reversal of a trend dating back to Margaret Thatcher in Britain and Ronald Reagan in the United States. It would also cast some fundamental and way more ancient tenets of free marketry in grave doubt. Stay tuned. Markets are perceived as self-organizing, self-assembling exchanges of information, goods and services. Adam Smith's invisible hand is the sum of all mechanisms whose interaction gives rise to the optimal allocation of economic resources. The market's great advantages over central planning are precisely its randomness and its lack of self-awareness. Market participants in this view go about their egoistic business trying to maximize their personal utility, oblivious of the interests and actions of all others, bar those they interact with directly. Somehow, according to this uh, worldview, this picture of the markets, somehow out of the chaos, out of the clamor, a structure emerges, order and efficiency unmatched. Man is incapable of intentionally producing better outcomes. And so any intervention and interference in the free markets are deemed to be detrimental to the proper functioning of the economy. At least that has been the orthodoxy until the Great Recession in 2008 and 9. It is a minor step from this idealized worldview back to the physiocrats who preceded Adam Smith and who propounded the doctrine of laissez-faire, laissez-passer, the hands-off battle cry. Theirs was a natural religion. Yes, religion. The market is an agglomeration of individuals. They thundered. The market was surely entitled to enjoy the rights and freedoms according to each and every person. John Stuart Mill, who weighed against the state's involvement in the economy in his influential and exquisitely timed Principles of Political Economy, published in the rebellious year of 1848. Undaunted by mounting evidence of market failures, for instance, a failure to provide afford affordable and plentiful public goods, this Aside, this flawed theory returned with a vengeance in the last two decades of the past century. Privatization, deregulation and self-regulation became faddish buzzwords and part of a global consensus propagated by both commercial banks and multilateral lenders such as the IMF. As applied to the professions, to accountants, stockbrokers, lawyers, bankers, insurers, and so on and so forth. As applied to the profession, self-regulation was premised on the belief <clears throat> in long-term self-preservation. Rational economic players and moral agents are supposed to maximize their utility in the long run by observing the rules and regulations of a level playing field. They are going to police each other Said, said the dictum. <laughs> and this noble propensity seemed, alas, to have been tampered by avarice and narcissism and by Im the immature inability to postpone gratification. Self-regulation failed so spectacularly to conquer human nature that its demise gave rise to the most intrusive statal stratagems ever devised. In both the United Kingdom and the United States, the government is much more heavily and pervasively involved in the minutiae of accountancy, stock dealing and banking than 
in at any other time in the past century. But the ethos and the myth of order out of chaos, with its proponents in the exact sciences as well, this ethos ran deeper than that. The very culture of commerce was thoroughly permeated and transformed by it. It is not surprising that the internet, a chaotic network with an anarchic modus operandi, operandi flourished exactly at these times. The dot-com revolution was less about technology than about new ways of doing business. Mixing umpteen irreconcilable ingredients, steering well and hoping for the best. No one, for instance, offered a linear revenue model of how to translate, translate monetized eyeballs, the number of visitors to a website, how to translate these to money, how to monetize. It was dogmatically held to be true that Miraculously, traffic, a chaotic phenomenon at the best of times, will translate to profit, hitherto the outcome of painstaking labor. Privatization itself was such a leap of faith. State-owned assets, including utilities and suppliers of public goods such as health and education, were transferred wholesale to the hands of profit maximizers. The implicit belief was that the price mechanism will provide the missing planning and regulation. In other words, higher prices were supposed to guarantee an uninterrupted service. Predictably, failure ensued from electricity utilities in California to railway operators in Britain. The simultaneous crumbling of these ur urban legends, the liberating power of the net, the self-regulating markets, the unbridled merits of privatization, so the crumbling of these urban legends inevitably gave rise to a backlash. The state has acquired monstrous proportions in the past few decades, especially since the Second World War. And it is about to grow further and digest the few sectors hitherto left untouched, either directly via ownership or, in the vast majority of cases, through uh, micromanagement and regulation or regulatory micromanagement. To say the least, to say the least, these are not good news. But we, libertarians, proponents of both individual freedom and individual responsibility, have brought it on ourselves by thwarting the work of that invisible regulator, the market, by interfering and by ignoring market failures. 